Hello, Carlos and Lucia. Hello. Yes, I'm, I'm in. Yes, and Yambura. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> good, good, thanks. Yes, uh, yes, yeah. I'm in. Yes, uh, Carlos, we hear you. We hear you, Carlos. Carlos, we hear you. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, so we are still um, waiting for Michael to arrive, um, and uh, but but let's um, let's get started anyway. And um, uh, Carlos J. Ochoa, we have known one another for a long time. You've been a leader in the space of XR and education. And there's Michael. Welcome, Michael. Hello. Great to have you here. Um, and. Um, you know, I'm really glad that you agreed to lead this panel. Um, really appreciate your efforts in this space to help create community and move XR in education forward. So I'm going to step out and turn it over to you and let you run the panel and I'll see you all at the end. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Karen. Well, it's uh, really a pleasure to be here. We have just uh, a crisis situation with the links, but uh, we are just on time. So thank you very much for the invitation. It's really a pleasure. And uh, I'm sure we are rounded by a lot of friends. And as uh, Karen said, we knew each other since the early beginnings of educators in VR. Uh, so it's really a pleasure to be here with Niambura uh, Baduingi. I don't Please I, correct me if I said it. Okay, thank you very much. My very good friend, Lucia Binotti. Hello, Lucia, how is life? <laughs> and Michael McDonald. So we are going to spend an uh, incredible time, believe me. So, but uh, I think uh, that, uh, well, I want to try to share my screen just for the presentation. Well, we are going to, to fly. We are going to make a journey to the wall of the perceptions, the emotions, the five senses, so beyond the imagination. So we are going to move to a place that is not uh, uh, nothing to see with the curriculum, uh, with the normal, let's say, uh, topics about education. We are going to talk about uh, creativity. But I think, and let me share some words about this as a brief introduction, just before we start with the, with the, with the movement. I think that we are living in times of great, great turbulence, where reality and virtuality live parallel and divergent realities. So climate change, energy crisis, economic crisis, values, fratricidal wars, crisis, where now we don't even read the headlines of the news. We are left with the shocking images which tell us nothing. 10 seconds videos happily handled by influencers. And I have the feeling that if someone woke up from 10 years of slumber, they wouldn't be able to recognize the planet we live on. We are becoming, we are becoming replicants of ephemeral characters, unable to face the problems of the real world head on. And at this forum like this, we have have to give us one or a debate strongly and change sustainability, equality, democracy, and conserving a clean blue and green planet diverse from our children's and here's. Immersive technologies, especially applied to the arts and humanities have an infinite path of journey, a space open to creativity, emotions, the sense, having the ability to create experiences, ephemeral and metaphorical micro universes unimaginable to make in other way and with high impact in students. So we as leaders, if we can consider as leaders, we have a mission, leave our kids a better world to live, they deserve it all. And that's what I'm going to talk about it. So we need to learn to fly together. So please join the States and we are going to talk about all these issues. So I will love to Introduce uh, Nyumbura when what you Yunji and please uh, give us a, a small speech about yourself and your a brief introduction about your curriculum and what you are doing, please. 
Uh, thank you very much, Carlos, uh, Lucia, and Michael. Really great to meet you, and thank you. It's really exciting to be on this panel together. Uh, my name is Nyambora Warenge. I run a um, VR new media company that focuses on work at the intersection of art and technology. And most recently, it has really been around creating location-based XR experiences to um, reach audiences um, outside of, you know, um, uh, the enthusiasts, uh, really publics, and participate in a public intellectual type of space. And most importantly, include teachers, uh, particularly in middle school, um, so that they start to think about how to either use these tools as part of the curriculum or how they can create around uh, the different subjects uh, that they're working on, particularly around art uh, for the for this uh, main thing. Um, and so um, recently, my recent project was Norma, an XR experience, and uh, it was looking at how different artists can use XR tools to amplify their work. So really looking at it as extensions of work and uh, yeah, extensions of work and looking at how they then set up differently for audiences to view and where else to experience art. Thank you, thank you, Nyambura. Thank you very much. So, Lucia, my friend, long time since our last talk. Please uh, make an introduction about yourself. <laughs> refresh yeah. my, my I, mind. <laughs> I have refresh, exactly. I, 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 am the, I, I have ghosted for the pandemic times. I, I was ghosting a little bit. Anyways, refreshing. Uh, I'm Lucia Binotti. I'm a professor of Roman studies and something that depending on the day I call digital humanities, experimental humanities, extreme humanities, something that kind of defies definition and that my more recent as in this last five years or so, interest in immersive learning has made it even more difficult to define. Um, but I currently, I have an ongoing project, uh, which, well, actually, let me say, let me, I don't know why I start doing all of this. When I, when I, what I really want to say is, I am very happy to be here, and <laughs> to be here among friends, but especially I, um, you know, I feel like almost all of the things that I wanted to say have been said better and more, you know, more multidimensionally by all of the other panels that I have been following this morning. Um, and so I wanted, um, Carlos, do you have a slide somewhere for me? Or? Yes, but, but yes, but maybe we oh, can but later. Oh, later. Okay. okay. Sorry. Then, uh, yeah, I, I have this, this project, which is called VR Piazza Italiana, which I must say that uh, in great part uh, at its inception was spearheaded and inspired by Michael's work. Uh, and so, you know, it's gone in, not sure if different directions, but in directions that hopefully they are back to be uh, combined, but you know, if it weren't oh, for yeah. Michael, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing what I'm, what I'm doing. And uh, the ultimate goal of the VR Piazza Italiana project is to create a quote unquote textbook to learn Italian in virtual reality. And of course that textbook to be an example of other textbooks in virtual reality for higher for for language in higher education. And yeah, so so we we have time to to talk about that later. Okay. So Michael, my friend, I still remember the last uh, meeting in educators in VR. So what are you doing? Tell us about uh, a brief introduction uh, about yourself in this immersive world. Well, yeah, I think you're referring to the 24-hour English lesson that I did at the start of 2020 when it's italy was right. the epicenter of covid at the time and i'm still recovering from that please don't put a head cell face for more than two hours people um 
Uh, but um, <laughs> the uh, yeah, so I think the promotional material published about this event puts me out there as um, working at the Zdabokoni School of Management in Milan, which is true. Um, but I wear a number of different hats. Um, some of them I won't tell you much about in this particular presentation. But um, I guess some of the experiences that maybe I could bring to the table today with my experience with web exercise, certainly in the field of language learning, because what I do in my daily kind of job at the moment is instructional designer for a school of management. And we are exploring VR, but not really kind of web XR avenues. Um, so, yeah, I, I teach English in VR. That's the crux of it. Um, but along the way, in the last six, seven years now, um, you know, kind of starting with Google Cardboard. And I know some people will be cringing and shouting at me saying, no, that's not real VR. But um, that was really the, the first taste that I had of immersing my students in, in um, you know, 360 degree images on a web browser that I just put together. And then since then, you know, I've ridden the wave with the Oculus devices and some others out there in order to not just immerse people in uh, uh, three dimensional six degrees of glorious freedom environments to help them learn a foreign language English in this case but actually get their hands dirty roll their sleeves up and get them creating content along the way so I'm sure we'll get into a little bit of that in this presentation but um, that's a little intro about me thanks for having me okay glad I'm really glad to see you Michael again so well only a few words about myself I'm Carlos Ochoa I'm the founder and CEO of One Digital Consulting and the grandfather of this meeting. So I'm sure I can say that, okay, I have a lot of grand kids with me. This is why my mission is, is, is quite clear. So I'm an evaluator of uh, the European Commission in XR projects and for the Alberta Innovates. Now I'm a member of the Metaverse Standard Forum, an independent expert in smart cities uh, standards co-chair of the VARA Education Committee, president of Madrid chapter, a member of many XR associations. I don't know how I can manage all this. This is maybe where I'm getting older uh, every single day. So I will make uh, later on a, a very brief presentation about more focus on creative arts. When I was working for many years, um, I cannot. I will not put the the, the 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 camera to the studio, but I have the collection of guitars here. And then, for those that love music, it will be really impressive. But this is for another session. So I, it's a pity that I lost a very very good friend of mine that was Ukalele, one of biggest of the biggest uh, uh, photographers and artists. Uh, in, in, in the world, and she was one of the best people that was working with us in VR with Gil Brass just five years ago when we made a, a live session with a, a lot of creators in, in a big stadium. It was really amazing. And uh, we have been working with musicians, we have been working with artists, we created a metaverse about the Islamic culture of Cuenca. So, but I will take it uh, some, some minutes, only some minutes to talk about that. So I think uh, now it's time to start because uh, Lucia said, okay, many people was talking about uh, many things in a better way. I, 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 I'm not agree with you because <laughs> every one of us has an incredible experience. So, and this, is, this experience is unique. So nobody can tell about or share the, our own experiences. And this is why we are here, because we can provide a lot of, of immersive value, you know? So the first, my first uh, question goes to Niambura, and is how you see the impact. And I, I will be very, very careful about the world of metaverse, okay? And mm -hmm. because I hate this word, and this is why I'm, I'm, I'm involved in this uh, Metaverse Standards Committee committee because we are trying to develop the standards let's say the basic on the rules for the future and believe me it's incredible more than 1000 people is working already on that so how you see the impact of xr in the immersive world in the creative environment in education um, <clears throat> thank you for the question i think also i just like to um give context. I work out of Kenya, which is in Africa. Therefore, we use also different technologies as much as we share certain technologies. There are certain aspects that are more useful for us where we're at now um, versus what, you know, um, yourselves, whether you're in Italy or you're in whatever part of Europe. I think that also needs to be talked about more deeply when we look at standards and how we're using the technology. We're all entering into a moment in time where 
somehow the technology is growing and we're all exposed to it. No one is really ahead more than another. We're all trying to grapple with the possibilities of it. So when I look from the context I'm in right now within Kenya, particularly Nairobi, which is the capital, and also looking at it as an urban center and how much in terms of data uh, penetration that we do have and mobile penetration, uh, my look at immersive learning is really looking at how does a mobile and the tablet and the web have um, use for that, um, really moving away from how we usually imagine immersive learning. I know this is a web XR, but usually people are thinking about the headset and how we use a headset and all of that. But when the immersive experience is via web and uh, definitely the mobile phone or tablet. And I think there's a lot that can be done there. For example, with the um, XR experience that I uh, curated in 2000 and actually 2020, just before the world closed down for the pandemic, it really looked at how the tools uh, can be used by uh, artists, a different actually Google VR tools, but more importantly is in its presentation and in what I talk about really engaging with the public was watching how this tools and this type of work can be transported into the curriculum for art and how then they're looking at how to merge that with, with the art curriculum, with the art teachers that I was talking with. Now, more broadly, you're also looking at the engagements with museums. So as I said, my, my end is more public working, not necessarily just private sector, but public working, education, um, culture, uh, but culture also situating it within the museums. And the discussion really becomes around access. You know, um, how, how, how can we, access via technology that is readily available to us, which more often than not is looking at immersive learning via the web on the you know, tablet, on the mobile phone. And particularly with the fact that, for example, in Kenya, the move by the government is to, you know, we're going to be a digital economy, digital first, and how to digitize across different, um, different uh, can we say, ministries and different, uh, so particularly within education and communication that has become a really big uh, challenge that they're working towards um, and then looking at, you know, within, you know, film and how we're using XR within like more creative work. So really I'm looking at a different type of platform in terms of immersive and looking at it through the, the web and uh, mobile phone. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And so much interesting. I have a, a, a question for you, Michael, and I think uh, uh, is because just your your background, your experience, and your value is how you see the new role of creators, teachers, and students. Because um, it depends of the environment where you are working. You know, sometimes the border is is really thin. But how how is your perception about this in this new immersive world? How long have you got? Uh, the uh, no, I guess no, 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 um, no, 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 no. Sorry, no, we I'll have only two minutes. Two, two minutes, okay, I'll keep because the, the time the is two minutes, okay. <laughs> two minutes. Um, we, look, I tell you, forget VR for a second. I know this whole okay. thing about VR, okay. but let's just forget that for a second. Go to yeah. any school in most countries around the world and it will be hard pushed to find any teacher using Skype or Zoom to connect their students with uh, other students around the world. The point is, um, how can we even consider potentially utilizing wonderful technologies and tools like VR um, or XR across the spectrum without even actually having the awareness of what we're already doing now and exploiting the tools that are already existing or even cost you God knows how much money and is sitting in the cupboard and has cost your school budget and you're not even using it. Dust them off, use them first and realize actually what are we doing together with the tools we already have? Um, you would then create a culture of sharing, contamination, dissemination among teachers, students, um, also involve the parents, you know, uh, local businesses, the academic community, get everybody involved, start the conversation, and then you're going to see the beauty of VR or, uh, sorry, XR, you know, uh, AR, VR, whatever you want. That's where I would say to start, which hopefully isn't kind of, you know, um, uh, contrast in contrast to the whole essence and ethos of this particular event. But the point is that the opportunities are immense for XR. But I really think that the first step is actually understanding what are the needs, what tools you already have, you know, and actually what are the basic conversations you're having with the students in front of you and the stakeholders in the school 
to lay the foundations to really bring it into you know, XR into the curriculum in a way that's truly going to, you know, uh, kind of transcend all types of learning and teaching opportunities. That's that's my answer. Is that two minutes? Yeah, uh, Michael, I think we are going to repeat this session in another forum because we need to talk a lot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for 30 minutes, believe me. So, yeah, yeah, I know, I understand. And this is really a, a point, a topic is really my passion. And, uh, well, I think that there's, there is something that it was mentioned before, and it was about the storytelling. But when we are talking about creative arts and humanities, absolutely, I, I do believe that the storytelling is a basic rule and something that has to change completely the paradigm. What do you think about that, Lucia? I said I'm completely <laughs> about that, but I want to hear your voice, please. Uh, um, okay, so, uh, so uh, thanks for the question. Um, I think I actually want to, uh, let's see, when we think about storytelling and what storytelling means for an equitable and also, um, you know, expansive um, way of the you know way of, of teaching the humanities of, of reintroducing the humanities i think i re i'm really starting to wanting to echo chris did uh, declaration this morning that we need to start thinking about artificial intelligence in its web you know webbing or interwebbing with the xrs in other words, now we have DAL E2 and we have Open AI. I don't know if you have seen what they can do. But when we put the students into an environment which we are trying to teach them, and I, you know, and I and I hear that this is something that we all are, are, are thinking and trying to do, when we want to teach them things like historical perspective, you know, sense of context um uh empathy and all of these things but we don't think that there is basically there is an artificial intelligence that can be more creative than we are and that if we don't properly integrate in our experiences we're never we're we're, we're really never <laughs> in other words the real creativity needs to go into teaching the students how to be creative with these new tools uh, and understand the humanities through the use of those new tools. So the storytelling, yeah, the storytelling goes into learning how to tell Dal E what kind of storytelling you want. Does that make sense? Mm. Well, ah. well, uh, because I, I I want to to uh, have the the last five minutes for a, a common question. Yes, I will love. Well, now I cannot share the screen. I don't know why. Well, I will tell you a story. Okay, this story is about uh, pandemic and the relationship between the students and the music. The School of Music Reina Sofia, which is a school of music of classical music international school, uh, decided to create a virtual reality experience just to put move forward all the 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 the, 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 the a concert, a classical music concert to the school. Okay, they came to me. I said, "Please, can you realize this for us?" I said, "No." Uh, why? Because I, 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 how you can imagine during the COVID, all the kids between twelve and 18 are going to see a video about uh, one hour of music about Respighi, Mozart and Tchaikovsky, virtual uh, classical music. I said, this, going, this will be a disaster. I can recreate for you 12 histories. And we are going to put Respighi in Italy. We are going to put the Tchaikovsky in Siberia. And we are going to create a context where we are going to rebuild 13 histories about nature, how to build a violin, the, the connection between the goods and uh, the instruments and the engagement between the musicians. So we recorded with ambisonic sound and 
three cameras, all the concept, but we meet a mix. Today, more than 4,000 kids around Spain visualize the experience. You cannot imagine the faces when the kids put the headset, put the headphones, and they are inside of the orchestra, and they see, well, sometimes I saw, I go inside the violin and I discover the orchestra and some dancers are moving around, but everything in the context, you know? So no uh, artificial intelligence, nothing, no jokes, no tricks, so uh, something very anal analogic, and the, the, you know what I mean? But it's something that you can uh, experiment in another way. So I truly believe, I truly believe that the storytelling, creativity, and uh, all these kind of technologies can create a lot of value just to transform the kids that today are crazy with TikTok and big block and plug plug and with all these stupid things, you know, and they need to understand the real value of nature and the engagement is between the music and the students. You know that 90% of the kids were amazing and they don't know idea about classical music, you know? So this is something that you can put in context with creativity in, in another world. So five minutes now, I have a question. So Nembura, where do you see, what is your favorite dream? What is your most amazing thing you want to do, let's say in the next one minute for the rest of your life? Um, ensure access. Sorry? Ensure access. Oh, Ensure okay. access. Um, Mike Japan talks about biased entry. That is it because we're here and we're speaking one language of that presumes access, inclusion, diverse, all yeah, of those. Absolutely. So for me, it's access and access along everything from the ability to tell stories, the ability to actually have a voice to say those stories, the ability to access the technology, all of that, the ability to not only access the technology, but be able to then use it and also participate in a remaking of it. Not just, you know, people are able to actually create their own tools. And I would like to say, I'd like to point you to um, the Games for Change, um, uh, they had a panel on, on XR and humanities and particularly for culture in Africa. So I suggest that you check it out um, on YouTube. I guess it will be up in a couple of weeks that really talks about in the different ways that we really have to create equitable access across uh, in order Absolutely. to actually make step into the space that we're talking about. Great, great, great. And Michael? Uh, the human, so I can't answer that question. I'd rather kind of, put it out there into the universe for no, uh, the future fair. no it's not, not fair. fair okay i'm cheating now <laughs> <laughs> the, the, um, uh, we don't have much time so i'm going to continue cheating otherwise we won't get out if you're alive um, I'll find but let's you. just let's just put it put it out into the universe uh, i don't know the answers uh it, it's 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 give the tools to the younger generations the students in the schools and see how they take it because i'll give you one little nugget to take away with you um we were using mozilla hubs um to build these uh, scenes in um, in uh, VR using their platform to promote local cultural heritage, and uh, they they wanted to create uh, show this castle, this local castle. They couldn't find a three D model, so they ended up constructing it themselves. Basically, with these platforms, and it's this kind of amazing example. If you just give give the students the tools, and they will often find a way. So you know that that's the very complicated answer for me. And I apologise for the children outside screaming. Thank no, you. no, but we will continue the conversation in other thing. And Lucia, please, your dream. Yeah. Uh, but but in, in one second because you have many dreams, I'm sure. <laughs> I know I have too many too many too many dreams. Um I I probably my ultimate dream is to convince my colleagues that this is really the way to the future. That's yeah. I love it. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Yes, yes. Um, and, and thank you to all of our panelists and to Carlos, to you for moderating. This was a great discussion and I'm sure it continue, can continue for uh, some time to come. Um, wow, I, I can't wait to go back and to review all of these sessions again because there's a lot of rich yeah. content. Yeah. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Lucia. Thank you, Nyambura. Thank, thank you, Michael. You. Yes. I love you guys. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> See you soon. See you soon.